Hey, how's it going guys, Zedai here. So, I wanted to share my thoughts on the state of play. I purposely actually did not make a video very, very quickly afterwards, because, you know, I wanted to sleep on it. You know, I wanted to summarize my thoughts. I wanted to actually give you my proper breakdown of the games that I'd be looking forward to in the state of play, that they have showcased it, few things that, well, genuinely did not interest me, and a lot of games did. Now, I'll be honest and upfront, one is the biggest game that I'm definitely looking forward to, and I'm sure you already know what it is, but I felt a little bit conflicted with this game. I will mention all about it just in a bit. First, let's get in through all the games that I really enjoyed watching and I know for a fact maybe I'll even come back and play it again. I don't know, that really depends, but it was definitely an interest to me. So, I just before I proceed, I wanted to mention that I purposely will be skipping a few games as well because I have no interest in them. Astrobot is the first game up uh, that they started off and kicked off with, you know, introduction to Astrobot DLC. Five new speedrun levels, ten new bus to rescue as an example. Uh, Helldivers is obviously present here. Stellar Blade Eve is here as well. So, you know, this is fantastic. We kind of already knew that they're going to be making their appearance. It is a free DLC coming sometime soon in, into 2024. Kind of still is a surprise that they didn't yet reveal the date. Uh, well, whatever, I guess. This is not really a problem. But yeah, up next for me uh, was actually an interesting one. Now, initially when I was watching this trailer, uh, I'm talking about Hell is Us. It's actually interesting because, well, I've seen it before, and but it was more maybe like a leak or perhaps something that was not yet concrete of how the game would be played out. And after watching this trailer, this gameplay, that introdu introduction here, man, I think I like what I've seen here. It kind of has a little bit of a reminiscence of a little bit of Death Stranding and of course Souls-like experience included. Nevertheless, I'm looking forward to it. I definitely want to, uh, you know, pick it up and um, play it. Uh, Arch Age Chronicles coming in 2025. Now, this game, I actually don't know much about it. And, I'm, and I have heard that Arch, Arch Age already has an IP and, you know, established franchise, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, this game, in terms of what I enjoyed, like what I most enjoyed was obviously the combat. It wasn't as fleshed out like it was Hell Is Us. But it did look like it would have been one of those more and more and bigger experiences, like open world elements. So if that's the case, I think there's something special could be here. But I don't know too much about it, at least not yet. Pal World is coming on PlayStation 5 and it is out already. That's awesome. Now I did hear about Pal Wars getting some lawsuit issues. Oh, wow, damn it. But yeah, the game is out now, guys, if you want to pick it up. I think it costs like up to 30 euros, 30 bucks. So, you know, it's not obviously it's not free. But yeah, if you want to pick it up, it's awesome. I'm definitely going to be picking it up. But I will, I'll do so later because I still have to play through uh, Dead Rising. Uh, What's it called? Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. What a name. <laughs> and uh, afterwards, I'll get it. Skipping quite a few games as well. Uh, Dragon Age The Veil Guard is uh, coming out on October the 31st. And uh, I don't know how I felt about this gameplay. Well, what is with Bioware and their marketing team? Why can they not really do proper showcase of their games and what they have to present here? Because this showcase, this gameplay that they showed here, didn't really entertain me or interest me. Now, I think I will, be, I will be picking it up on day one, but I don't know because something about it has just gives me the wrong vibes. Now, I do know a lot of people say they had a fantastic time with it. They played it already for the preview, like up to, what, six to seven hours, in fact. Yeah, that doesn't tell me shit because we heard the same thing with Cyberpunk. It was like fantastic, previews were fantastic. Like initially when people were playing, it was like the best thing ever. And then look how that turned out to be. And I'm not saying it's going to be the same issue. But again, I feel like this is a game that's getting overpraised. At least that's what I th think about it. But maybe when it comes out, people will still give it a little bit of a praise. But when when ordinary people will be finally be able to play it, they will like, okay, this is shite. Like that's kind of feeling I'm getting from this game. Anyway, uh, maybe it's just a misunderstood kind of game that... It's just done very poorly in terms of the marketing. Nevertheless, yeah, I'll have my eyes on, on it. That's all I can really say about it. All right, so skipping yet again a few games, including Alan Wake. I don't really mind to care about it too much, honestly. Towers of Agashba. The only reason I was 
entertained watching it because it reminded me of Animal Crossings. Basically, well, everything that you can do here, it kind of you can build your own world. People can join you as well. It's just I see the potential. I don't know how I feel about it yet because it's still too early for me to say. Oh, by the way, November is going to get its early access, so that's awesome. And uh, perhaps a lot of people will be able to, uh, fortunately, able to get this and experience it for themselves. Here's a tidbit of like LEGO Fortnite it is getting a split screen and also a DualSense controller. Uh, that's just, that's fantastic. I'm genuinely glad that, you know, there's some kind of a split screen implementation for the video games because nowadays split screen, that's like a rarity. You know, I was even considering, should I mention these two? Dynasty Warriors Origins uh, is coming January 17th, and also Monster Hunter Wild out on February 28th. <clears throat> yeah, personally for me, I know I'm not going to be playing these games, so I just wanted to, you know, give them a little bit of a highlight, but I'm not that interested in these sorts of games. And uh, LEGO Horizon Adventures out November the 14th. I think there was actually a little bit of a leak, so we already knew that's coming out November the 14th. And uh, this trailer didn't do nothing for me, unfortunately. Like, it, this game is trying to to be something closer to Astrobot, and the only really big thing that they're trying to do here as well, especially when we've seen how the characters are dressed up, and obviously it's quirky, it's funny, as they say, it's cheesy, more like closer, I would say. Yeah, they're just going on based on nostalgia, like having these, like a sack boy and uh, Ratchet and Clank just being present in this game. Yeah, they're just going pure on nostalgia. I don't believe this game is going to be turning out that well. At least, I'm not trying to bash on it. I'm not, I hope I'm, really, I'm not trying to see it on the negative light. But again, maybe I could be wrong. Oh God, I hope I'm wrong because I want to pick it up and play it. Just experience it for a little bit at least. Family game, it's not a problem for me to play. It's like Astro Bot is not too far from being a family game either. But yeah, this game could be something special. Could be. But again, the, like I said, marketing team does just doesn't do it justice, unfortunately. At least not for me. Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered for the PS5 and PC by Nixus. And it's Octo coming out October the 31st. Like, Horizon's games are damn cursed. Why can't they not release the damn game when there's, like, nobody releasing, like, a big big game coming out right the next same day? Like, initially it was a Zelda game for Zero Dawn, and then for Forbidden West was Elden Ring. And, and now with the remaster, it's, a, <laughs> it's Dragon Age. It's just, like, this title is cursed. Like, it's, like, I'm purposely made sure not to succeed it's insane <laughs> and yeah you can actually uh able to get an upgrade f just for an additional ten dollars and guys if you get if you did not know if you had this game for free but not through the playstation plus you guys may not remember but horizon zero dawn received a free copy for everybody and during the playstation's play at home initiative and if you already redeemed it, you will be able and you have the access of getting this for $10 additional and getting this remaster. So you don't have to purchase the game all over again. And I'm thankful that they're actually doing this. I'm kind of even surprised that they're doing this. I thought that you will have to repurchase the game all over again. So to initialize this uh, upgrade path. But yet yeah, they're staying true to the words. And if you have this game already redeemed from the PlayStation's Play at Home initiative. Yeah, that's fantastic. But again, guys, if you redeem it through PlayStation Plus, then unfortunately you will not be uh, eligible for it. Here's a big one that I'm definitely looking forward to. Stellar Blade update. Stellar Blade is getting a photo mode and it's also getting a soundtrack. Uh, I, look, these two I don't really interest me, but it's actually kind of dangerous, in fact, that's getting a photo mode. Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> but maybe in the best of ways. Who knows? Who knows? Right. <laughs> Twitter is a weird thing. Well, X is a weird thing. And uh, big thing, obviously, Stellar Blade and Nier Automata are getting a crossover DLC, and it's coming 2024. That is epic. Unfortunately, we do not know, uh, if anything, really, how big is this crossover going to get? Is it just like one mission? Or is it just that Eva will be able to dress up like a Nier? It's just what is going on there, you know? Unfortunately, it's just nothing else that we can really mention about that. 
They went ahead as well with the PlayStation Plus announcements for the uh, month of October. Dino Crisis is mentioned here, and that Dead Space is going to be, uh, you know, one of the games uh, for the month of October. And uh, Doki Doki, like people that do not know Doki Doki are for a treat. Like they are in for a treat. My God. <laughs> and then 2K24, that's like a that's an embarrassment. There should not be any sport games presented here as well because, yeah, it's just every year we're getting these stupid sport games it's not a good idea to have a subscription model especially catered for these sport games as well but again yeah uh like mentioned already so dino crisis is making an appearance the last part one also is going to be uh, a part of this extra version of the ps plus coming september the 26th so if you guys want to try it out i mean at this point who has not played the last of us that also includes the part one, the remake. Like, seriously. <laughs> and then they went ahead with the new DualSense PS5 covers of the colors announcements for Indigo, uh, Pearl, and Teal. They look really good, this Chroma collection. And uh, yeah, personally, it's not for me, since I believe it would have been a better idea to have these options for your PlayStation 5 Pro instead. But either way. Oh, then uh, Mark Cerny made an appearance and uh, he showcased a few additional games that will be able to have the full capabilities of uh, PlayStation 5 Pro enhanced games. So obviously we knew some of these games already here, but there were some extra included games that they kind of wanted to highlight a little bit. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Horizon Forbidden West, Gran Turismo 7, Stellar Blade, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, Jedi Survivor, it's finally Dragon's Dogma 2 and Jedi Survivor definitely needs this. <laughs> Snake Eater Delta, that's one of the new games that will be coming out. And finally, it's not just Assassin's Creed Shadows, that one of the new games that's going to get this enhancement. Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 4, uh, Formula 1 2024, or 24 I guess. A Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, HC Shadows as mentioned, Spider-Man 2. And also, they just mentioned even more. And yeah, that's all. And of course, with the biggest thing of them all, it is the final announcement. It's Ghost of Tsushima 2, but, well, obviously it's not. It is Ghost of Yotei, and it's coming in 2025 for PlayStation 5. That is awesome. Now, let's talk about this just relatively quickly, because I actually want to make a separate video all about Ghost of Yotei. And I'll be honest. I was very, very conflicted. Like, I felt very mixed about this. First I started watching, I was so shocked. I was like, yes, please, thank you. Oh, I can't wait. But then I noticed it's a female. It was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Where, where, where are we going with this? That's odd. Because in my mind, I started thinking, wait, maybe this is Jin Sakai's daughter? And it's like, okay, wait, wait. But Jin still had some, some story left in him. Because, like, there's a second uh, Mongol invasion also in Japan that happens. Maybe they could have went over through that history. But no, they went completely different timeline. That 300 years later from Jin Sakai's story. Can you guys believe that? And it's also, I, I looked it up, it's like 20, 30 years after Assassin's Creed Shadows. So that's kind of interesting point to make. Then I started watching it and I found out that, well, no, this has nothing to do with Jin Sakai. And I was like, oh man, this sucks. I just, I was really conflicted because my expectations was with Jin Sakai, me, knowing that he is the ghost. But now I'm looking at it, wait, is this going to be the next Assassin's Creed? Because if you guys know it, every, every time or so, Assassin's Creed have different titles, right, different subtitles different characters, different worlds. But in this case, it looks like going forward, Ghost of, and whatever it is, the next part of the title, it's going to be a similar approach, like it was in the Assassin's Creed titles. I honestly don't know how I feel about that, because that's not really what I was anticipating. I'll be honest, initially when I saw this, I was a little bit disappointed. No, no, that's not true. I was quite disappointed. And that's why I wanted to sleep on this. And I did, I started thinking about it, and I started le learning more about this, and I kind of felt, okay, that's all right. Still hurts, because I like Jin, Jin Sekai, and now it looks like we're getting a new character. Now, I know all about these details regarding the character and where it's set, well, obviously in Yotei, of the mountain in Yotei, 
and especially that area and that region but again it's kind of disappointing that unfortunately we're getting this <laughs> but nevertheless that's all i wanted to mention because i'll have a separate video and i will be going over every breakdown details regarding gosa yotai <sighs> all right guys thank you so much for watching like and subscribe do let me know as well what you think about the state of play and uh were you disappointed were you feeling conflicted about it do let me know i'll see you guys all like subscribe and uh yeah have a good one